Good afternoon. On behalf of the family, I want to thank you for being here. It's not appropriate for mourners to say thank you. Everyone is here for the love that they had for Leonid, and it's not your responsibility to say thank you. But I know how grateful you are, and on their behalf, I will say thank you. And I want to just advise everybody who is here today that, first of all, please turn off your cell phones or silence them. And the family would like you to know that you are all invited to join them after the burial at Mount Sinai Cemetery at the Europa Cafe on Landers Circle. They've also requested that should you wish to make a donation in Leonid's memory, please do so to the American Cancer Society or to the charity of your choice. Just waiting for a few more people. Birth is a beginning, and death a destination, and life is a journey. From childhood to maturity and youth to age, from innocence to knowing, from foolishness to discretion, and then perhaps to wisdom, from weakness to strength or strength to weakness, and often back again, from health to sickness, and back we pray, to health again, from offense to forgiveness, from loneliness to love, from joy to gratitude, from pain to compassion, and grief to understanding, from fear to faith, from defeat to defeat to defeat, until looking backward or ahead, we see that victory lies not at some high place along the way, but in having made the journey stage by stage, a sacred pilgrimage. Birth is a beginning, and death is a destination, and life is a journey, a sacred pilgrimage to life everlasting. To Lilia, to Tanya and Joseph, to Leonid's precious grandchildren, to Sasha and Sean, to Sophia and Miran, and to little Mila, to relatives and dear friends. The light in your world has diminished with the passing of your beloved husband, Papa, and Yeda. I know that you are overwhelmed with grief and despair, but I also know that you are overwhelmed by the outpouring of love and the words of care from family and friends that you have received over the last days, the last weeks, as you have navigated this most difficult path of darkness and pain. Yesterday, I had the honor to meet with all of you. I got to hear fascinating stories and learn about Leonid Kuberman's life, a truly unique human being, larger than life itself, a charismatic man whose charm and magnetism drew close all who were lucky enough to know him. He was a man of integrity, born and ingrained with the spark of life, a spark so bright that it ignited the light in all of those who loved him, his family and his friends. It's hard to believe he is gone, and still we know that we must accept the reality that faces us. Mere words are not enough. So we begin to find comfort during times such as these by looking to the teachings and wisdom of our tradition. Psalm 23 begins, Adonai ro'i lo echsar min odesh yarbitseni amay menuchot yinahaleni nafshi yeshovei v'yancheni v'magle tzedek 
למען נשמו. גם כי אלך פגי צל מוות, לא יראה רק כי אתה עמדי. שבתך ומשענתך, המה ינחמוני. תערוך לפני שולחן, נגד צוררי, תשענת ושמן ראשי, כוסי רוויה. אך טוב, וחסר ירדפוני כל ימי חיי, ושבתי בבית אדוני לאורך ימים. The mysteries of life and death are beyond human understanding. We are perplexed and overwhelmed when pain and anguish befall those whom we love. In sorrow confronted by death, which has taken Leonid Kuberman from our midst, we feel frailty. Like morning dew, we glisten for an hour or two and disappear into a new day. Ro'e Yisrael, shepherd of Israel, guide us, your flock, with love and compassion. In our grief and desolation, we grow distant, but do not abandon us, but draw us closer to you, God. Grant solace and comfort to those who mourn. May they sustain each other with the blessing of memory, the memory of the life of their beloved Leonid. In the valley of the shadow of death, beside the still waters and in the green pastures, you, Adonai, are our shepherd. Be our strength. our shield, be our guide, and our comfort throughout all our days. And let us all say, Amen. Our sages, our rabbis, in a strange comment on a verse from the biblical book of Ecclesiastes gives us a profound insight into life and into death. Kohelet states, The day of one's death is greater than the day of one's birth. This statement naturally puzzled the rabbis for how they wondered could the day of one's death possibly be better than the day of one's birth. And one of our rabbis, Rabbi Levi, explained the verse with the use of this analogy. Imagine, he said, two ships laden with merchandise, one coming into port and the other going out. However, the people on the dock cheered only the ship that was coming into port. A puzzled spectator asked, tell me, why do you cheer the ship that is coming into port, but not the one that is going out to sea? And the rabbi replied, we are cheering the ship that is coming into the dock, for we know that it went out in peace and it has now returned in peace. However, the ship that is now beginning its voyage, who can tell what her fate will be? And Rabbi Levi continued, So it is with a person. When a person is born and begins his life's journey, we do not know what sort of life he will live and the nature of his deeds. However, when he has finished his life's journey, it is apparent to all what his life and his deeds were like. While we feel a sense of loss at Leonid Cooperman's passing, we can find consolation and comfort in the knowledge that that the memory of his life lives on after him and testifies to the sort of person that he was. Each of us has a special connection to this very special man, but one of the strongest bonds he created in his life, aside from Lilia and his children, were his grandchildren, his precious Sasha, Sophia, and Miran. They would now like to share some of their loving memories of their Dieda with all of us here today. Let me start by saying this. Dedo was an amazing man. He was a brother, a friend, a husband, a father, a grandpa, a great-grandpa, and so much more. Somehow he was great at all of the above. 
The other was the go-to man on everything. If my mom didn't take, couldn't take me to practice, the other is prepared and already at my door to take me. If mom and papa go out of town, Baba and the other are to the rescue. The other was always there for me. My first paycheck came from Jeda after I helped him with the job. No matter how much something bores him, he will always enjoy it as long as you enjoy it. For example, he learned the game of football just so he could talk with me about it and watch it with me. Here's something the two of us loved. Donuts. Let me rephrase that. He loved being with me, and I loved donuts. So if you add the two together, we both love donuts and being with each other. Diego was not a quitter, and he didn't raise quitters. He was either an 100% or a 0% man. A funny story about him was when we were in Aruba, I was in the hotel room with him. As much as I loved staying with Baba and Diego, nighttime was terror because Diego snored so loud. I couldn't sleep, but every morning we would laugh about it. To end this, I'd like to say that Diego lived his life to the fullest and got everything he could ever imagine. We shouldn't be sad over his life is over. We should be happy that it happened. Thank you. One of the things that made Diego so loved by so many people was his ability to bond immediately with anyone he met. Since his passing, every one of us, including Sandra Migran and I, have been getting texts and phone calls from our friends saying how much they love Dieda. He made a large impression on everyone he met, and I was obviously no exception. Dieda has taught me more lessons than anyone in my life, and they were the most effective because not only did he give the advice, he sat down and explained the reasoning behind his words. My Dieda not only taught me how to treat people with respect, unconditional kindness, and to never be jealous because it was your worst enemy, but also my life skills like how to drive, how to swim, how to hold a pencil. Um, he went to the bank with me to cash my first check also, and um, math. Math with Dieda was something we all experienced from his eldest daughter, Tanya, all the way down to Migran, his youngest grandson. And I speak for more than myself when I say that I have never seen him yell more. But he never yelled because we didn't understand something. He only ever yelled when he saw that we weren't trying. If we were doing something, it was full effort or no point in doing it at all. Dieta taught me to be persistent, patient, and logical, just like he was. And I truly believe that these are the lessons that are going to get me through the rest of my life, even if he's not standing next to me. Dieta was not just my grandpa, my friend, and my teacher. He was also a coach, as he was Sana's, Mikan's, and Tanya's when she did gymnastics. He took me to my first Taekwondo lesson and has been there every single week since I was four. Um, until I paused this year for school. But even when I went back in the summer and he was in the hospital, he always asked about Taekwondo and how practice was and what we were working on. Dieta was there for all of my major achievements. He never missed a competition, a recital, a concert, and even when I started playing lacrosse, he asked questions and tried to learn about it so that he could come to my games and give me tips on how to improve. I honestly cannot picture where I would be, how much I would have accomplished, had he not been there coaching me through it and cheering me on. His death has left a large vacancy in my chest that can only be filled with good memories and his lessons that I plan to pay forward to my kids and continue to use throughout my life. Мой родной. Слышали такие слова? Здравствуйте, мой родной. Свидание, мой родной. Спокойной ночи, мой родной. Hello, my friend. How are you, my friend? 
My grandfather considered everybody in this room, those streaming in, those not with us anymore, his, his relative. Somebody meets him one time, they've known him their whole life. My grandfather meant something to them, to you, and you meant something back to him. And I hope everybody in this room really understands that. The personal connection that you feel with my grandfather was very real. He really was proud of that. And each of you and the connection that you had with him. He wanted to just give all the time. And there was never a requirement back. He just had more to give and more to give. And so it's as if this beacon of light just shut off for all of us a couple of days ago. And an 88-year young man left us. As so many of you stated over the last few days, it was never going to be the right time. We were always going to be longing for more. And he went his way in a way that all of us remember him like that. And that's how it has to be. Twenty years apart from Migran and Sofia, I was raised in the home of my Baba and Diana. Until I was 16, this is where I lived. My friends grew up there. They have personal connections with my grandparents, still do. And uh, not much different from my cousins, I too received training in jiu-jitsu, dance, and advanced mathematics. I too endured punishment when there was no effort. I, too, learned the value of an open and positive perspective. I have a zest for life, free of judgment of others, and one where the glass is always half full. A regimented training included education and sport, service to others, moral, ethical, behavioral training that I now realize had just a massive impact on who I am today as an adult, as a mother. Cantor Laurel sat stunned yesterday as each of us described my grandfather in the exact same way. This militant training we had as children. And she looked at me and said, how do you plan to raise your daughter? And I just looked back and said, exactly the same. And so it hit me, he's not gone. He's been training us for 37 years, for 60 years, for all the years of his life, he's been training us to carry forward the immoral embodiment of his core values. And I started getting flashes of the type of people that are in our life, the friendships that we keep, the type of people that are higher, the strict morals that I pass down to my own daughter. And I realized it was all him. Everything that I do was him. And I didn't even know. And so I would just quickly like to share a few of our favorite, I guess our ingrained morals and values that he lived by and that now we carry forward. One, if you are going to do something, do it with 100% every time, no matter how small the task. Two, before you act, think about the potential outcome. Three, there is no right and wrong when it comes to family. There is simply respect, especially the respect of your elders. Four, friends are family. Five, accept people for who they are. Choose to find the joy in little things. Don't judge as he would tell my husband who had to 
try many interesting things on the table as my grandfather looked into his mouth and made sure he chewed all of it. First try it, he said. Then you can make your opinion. And lastly, <laughs> was the last piece of advice he gave me. Don't just say it. Do what you say you're going to do. And so my grandfather was consistent in his lessons because he embodied them through his life. He didn't just tell us to choose joy. He didn't just say, go be happy. He showed us through his actions, and we absorbed through osmosis, as you can see without even realizing it. And so, Mayiradni, my friends, today we mourn the loss of our fearless leader, our strength, our motivation as a person, but he has meticulously left in each of us a part of him. And so I ask of you to carry forward life as if he never left us because he didn't. Thank you so much. And his daughter, Olga. I will be <coughs> saying what I want to say. I will be speaking Russian, so please translate to our English-speaking friends. Я буду говорить по-русски, потому что это тот язык, на котором говорил и думал мой папа. Я надеюсь, я смогу закончить то, что я хочу сказать. Я чувствую, что я должна и поэтому я сюда вышла. Папа бы этого очень хотел. Хотя он знает прекрасно, что публичные речи это не мой конек. Мне очень хочется сейчас много, долго и обо всем на свете говорить с папой. Но так случилось, что мне сейчас буду говорить о папе. У нас особенные отношения. Он всегда мне был отцом. На все, во всех смыслах проявлениях этого слова. Но самое главное и ценное, он мой друг. Самый важный, самый близкий на свете друг. Я приходила и говорила, папа, есть ситуация. Папа говорил, садись, будем разбирать. Его совет всегда был важен и нужен, вне зависимости ни от моего, ни от его возраста. Сказать, что я всегда прислушивалась, это будет неправдой. Мы обычная семья, и, конечно, на определенном этапе жизни проблема отца и дети присутствовала. Но в конечном итоге я должна признаться, что папа всегда был прав. Мне сейчас сложно представить, как дальше идти по жизни без опоры. Без его одобрений, нареканий, без доброй улыбки его глаз искрящихся такой любовью, которую только родитель излучает, смотря на своего ребенка. Я росла и всю жизнь знала, что несмотря ни на что, ни на какие проступки, меня любят за то, что я есть, и будут любить всегда, и простят абсолютно все. Когда уходит родной и близкий человек, всегда думаешь, что, может быть, осталось что-то недосказанное или недодано, 
я поняла одну очень важную вещь. Между нами не было недосказанности, мы не скупились на чувства и добрые слова. Папина любовь не выражалась обязательно фразами или словами «я тебя люблю», эти нежности — это не мужское, это не папина. Он этим словам мне говорил по-другому. «Доча, сегодня дождь будет, положи зонт в машину». Ты позавтракала? Прохладно. Надеюсь, что-то потеплее. Папа шел по жизни, зная, что нужен и очень любим. И это давало ему силы плевать с высокой горы на какие-то там болячки. Они существовали отдельно от него. Он никогда не жаловался. Если была проблема, мы ее решали на месте окончательно. Сказать, что мне не хватает тебя, да ничего не сказать. Что-то сломалось внутри, и уже это не починить. Я прожила беззаботную, абсолютно беззаботную во всех смыслах жизнь, потому что до сих пор я жила у папы в кармане. Я была уверена, что если мне нужно одновременно двоих детей развести в разные концы города, то у меня проблемы нет. И так во всем и всегда. Я знала, что папа, и папа говорил «да». Я старалась быть ему хорошей дочерью. Мне важно было быть достойной его любви. И мне еще очень важно было, чтобы он всегда, каждую минуту знал, как сильно я его люблю. Поэтому я, я не прощаюсь. И я знаю, что если так совпали звезды, и я родилась у тебя... Ты позаботишься, чтобы они совпали еще раз. И мы обязательно будем вместе. speak English because there are lots of people English speaking and the rest of you probably understand it as well. Um, uh, it just happened 40 years ago, exactly 40 years ago, my dad departed and exactly the same year we met. Um, I can never substitute my father, but he made my life different. Uh, the journey lasted 40 years. I learned a lot. I made lots of mistakes, but it's just a, I learned through the years how right he was. And I will do a kind of a allegory. Uh, every person in our life has a book. And every person who we meet written that book. Some people taking only one word, some people a couple of sentences paragraphs, pages. In my book, there was a book within a book. It's a huge chapter, just absolutely huge. 
which all of a sudden disappear. The pages, it was not ripped off from the book. Uh, the pages are still in there. Just the letters are blurred. I mean, it's just kind of vanished. But we're all, and I am, this is my book. Uh, I will basically quote every single word in there. The only difference right now is this chapter was always growing, and now it stopped. But uh, <laughs> uh, this chapter was full of wisdom, love. Uh, it, it was on and on and on and on, all good. And... Uh, What I want to see, say is, it was a wonderful chapter. And thank you, thank you for this. Thank you all. For sharing your stories, but for most of all, I thank you for the wisdom. I was, as Sasha mentioned, I, I was really blown away yesterday with the incredible stories. But I'm so grateful for the wisdom that he was able to share that you have actually taken into yourselves, into your hearts. And it's apparent when you see three grandchildren standing together saying the same thing, how much love, how much connection, what a bond he had created with each one of you, and how you will take that and pay it forward to the generations to come. And that's what's important in the life of a man. And Miran, you said, not how he died, that's important, but how he lived. And that's the perfect question. How did he live? He lived an incredible life. If you'll be so kind, I have a few words that I've also written from the wonderful things I heard yesterday. Leonid Cooperman finally arrived in the United States in 1990 at age 56 with his wife Lilia and teenage daughter Olga. Tanya and Joe had recently emigrated just months before and convincing Papa to leave the Soviet Union even though he had endured many hardships and challenges was not the easiest task. He had attained the highest position and success possible in his field as an electrical engineer that any Soviet Jew could. And he and Lilliet had just completed renovating and remodeling their home from floor to ceiling. They had finally reached a level of comfort and a sense of peace and tranquility there. But it was a deal which he had made with Sasha, a deal that was not going to be broken and he finally relented and joined the family here in Cleveland. As an engineer in the Soviet Union, Leonid arrived with a working knowledge of French, not too helpful, but almost no English-speaking ability at all. He quickly enrolled at Tri-C to learn the language and continue working as an engineer, but he soon came to realize the proficiency in English would be much harder to attain than he had suspected for a man starting over at age 56 in a new country. But Leonid was a man who was driven and never sat still, and now without a job, he immediately made the decision to care for and support his family in a different way. He was impressed with the amenities and the opportunities available here in the United States, and with nothing being beneath him, he became a bakery delivery driver, a job he loved and elevated almost to an art form. Not only did he deliver the bagels, he learned all about them. He knew how the bakers made the dough, how they were boiled and baked. He loved the smell of the hot, crusty disks, and he shared his excitement, enthusiasm, and his wisdom about bagels with the world, with his family and his friends. 
Leonid also loved to drive, and he always dreamed of owning his own car in the United States. And while his English was improving, it wasn't quite there yet, and he needed the help of an interpreter to pass his driver's exam. Tanya's husband, Joe, volunteered to take him to the testing station. But Lee and its friends, and you know who you are, had already advised him about what to do and what to say at the test. They told him to stay relaxed and answer yes to everything. <laughs> and he wasn't shy about speaking in English, even with mistakes, and he followed the advice. So the questions began in rapid succession before Joe had the chance to interpret anything for his father-in-law. Sir, they asked, can you drive an automatic car? Yes. Do you understand the rules of the road? Yes. Do you know the speed limit for a school zone? Yes. Do you have night blindness? Yes. <laughs> Do you drink alcohol and take drugs? Yes. Everything answered in the affirmative. Needless to say, Joe quickly jumped in and stopped him before any further damage could be done. He did, in the end, pass the test. He received his driver's license and purchased his very first car. You said it was a Nissan. Nice. He became a personal driver for the Klein family and the courier for Albert Furs. He may have actually picked up one of my furs, now that come to think of it. His excellent health and strong muscular physique made schlepping multiple coats at a time, 11, 12 coats, seemed like he was carrying feathers. He learned the layout of Cleveland streets like the back of his hand and was often making bets against the GPS that he could outsmart the technology. And in the end, not only did he win the bet, the GPS actually broke and malfunctioned with all the rerouting and recalculating it needed to do against Leonid's superior wit and intelligence. Leonid loved life. He squeezed everything he could out of each day on this earth to make the most of the gifts he was given by God. He was an eternal optimist, choosing to see only the good, forgiving, and forgetting the bad, and always looking ahead to the next adventure. He loved many things, but more than anything, he loved his family. In Judaism, we refer to a father as Avi Mori, my father, my teacher. And to Tanya and Olga, he was the finest, most intelligent teacher and guide in real world and life lessons. We know that knowledge gained in a classroom is only part of an education. The real education, that of imparting values and ethics occurs often in the home. As youngsters, he worked tirelessly with you both, drilling you on math and science, supported your endeavors, critiqued your mistakes, not with criticism, but with love. Tanya, you remembered as a child how your papa traveled for work, but when he returned home, it was like a national holiday and celebration in the house. He began with you to work on physics and math, took your side when you misbehaved, pled your case with mom, and never raised his voice. You knew when Papa meant business just by his look, his nod, his smile, and his words, though he wanted you to attend the same technical university he had. He supported your decision to pursue a higher degree in sports and athletics. He cheered you on at every gymnastic competition, and he assessed your performance with a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Olga, you shared with me that your father was a very methodical teacher, very patient, but only according to the effort was the reward. He always wanted you to be ahead of the curve, so he'd study the upcoming year's math and sit with you to prepare in advance the start of a new year. He wasn't happy with less than perfection, as we know. If real effort was applied in any subject and encouraged both of you to do your best and never give up. What did you say, Miran? Dead you was not a quitter. He didn't tolerate it in anyone. He was there for you and Tanya, and you made his life complete. And to his beloved Lilia, his wife of 60 years, you were best friends, devoted and inseparable from the start. 
You are opposites, perhaps, in personality, but superbly matched. Your hearts and minds in sync with one another always. There was never a day that passed without a phone call and a check-in. You were his hero, his rock, and his personal chef. He loved your delicious cooking, but not as much as he loved and adored you. He wanted to give you a very special gift for your 60th wedding anniversary that you just celebrated together in July. Though he was declining in health and in the hospital, he conspired with his daughters and selected a magnificent diamond ring, a purely physical token of all the love he felt for you throughout all your lives together. You and the entire family were his sun, his moon, and his stars. He nurtured each of you and with his incredible wisdom helped shape your lives, young and old, an inspiration to all whose paths he crossed along the way. He was loved and beloved, a friend for life. He knew the true meaning of happiness and success, and it had nothing at all to do with material wealth. He was rich in love, the love he received, the love he gave, and his life was filled with significance and meaning because you were all there in it with him. You were steadfast and caring until the very end. No more eloquent eulogy and no better summary of Leonid Kuberman's life can be given than to say that his family considered themselves blessed, for he was their husband, their father, their grandfather, a great-grandfather. He was a dear, special relative and friend. I know that each of you have memories of your relationship with Leonid, so we take one quick moment now to reflect, each of us, personally, as we think of him in our hearts. Adonai Natan, Adonai Lakach, Yehishem Adonai Mevorach, God has given, now God has taken away. Blessed be the name of God. Please rise for the memorial prayer. El Malerachamim. <laughs> Shochen b'amromim, hametzem inuchan nechona, tachal kanfesh chinna, im kroshim utehorim, kezohar harakia mazirim, het nishmat ayakar shelanu. Shalach le olamo. Bala rachamim. Yasti rehu beseta kanafav le olamim. Bitro bitro chaim et nishmato. Adonai hu nachalato. Bianuach bishalom. Amishkavo. Venomar amen. Compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to Leonid, son of Manya and Anna Cooperman. He has entered eternity. O God of mercy, let him find refuge in the shelter of your wings. Let his soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is his inheritance, and now may you, Leonid, rest in true peace. And let us all say, Amen. This concludes our service here in the chapel. We will continue at Mount Sinai Cemetery in Highland Heights.
Come around this side, and then we'll get somebody to give you a flag. They just pull all the way around, sir.